Hello everyone and welcome to Ocean Cadence. In our video today, we will be covering the topic of the calibration of a DP transmitter or a DP cell on board a ship for a boiler and also understanding as to how we can fit a new DP transmitter in case the existing one is malfunctioning. So let us start. As in one of our previous videos, we have explained the functioning of the DP transmitter which you can correlate to first have the basic understanding of the working of the DP transmitter and the different terminologies that are associated with the pressure sides and the type of flow and the electrical system associated to it. So now continuing from where we left off, let us imagine a situation where the annual or the routine calibration process of the DP cell is due. So, as we know that in the DP cell or the DP transmitter, one side of the connection is the low pressure side and the other is the high pressure side. So, the most important thing over here is that during the process of calibration to be carried out or during the refitting or fitting of a new DP transmitter, the remote systems of level display and sensing would be out of order for some time, which means that the boiler would mostly be on local monitoring and thus it becomes extremely important that in most of the cases we do this when the auxiliary boiler is non-operational. That means when we are out at sea so that the entire load of steam generation can be taken by the exhaust gas boiler and also we need to physically monitor the level continuously with the local level gauges for the boiler that is the local system which is the most reliant way of monitoring the boiler level and the performance. This means that in terms of safety aspect, we need to make sure that the gauge glass are already in proper condition and showing the right level as well as the clear sight of the level to make sure that there are no discrepancies when we are carrying out the transmitter calibration overhaul or replacement. Now to begin with the process of calibration, as we know that in the DP transmitter, we'll have the inlet valve on both the high pressure side as well as the low pressure side and there would be a direct isolation valve which will be operating from the steam side and the water side. So obviously the steam side valve would be the high pressure side and the water side would be the low pressure side and simultaneously there would also be an equalizing valve on the DP cell which for any manual intervention or processes what we are discussing such as calibration or refitting would help to equalize and then nullify the pressure of the line. We would also have drain valve on both the sides so that once the isolation is carried out and the pressure is nullified, we can easily drain the system and make sure that the system does not have any pressure accumulation so as to make sure that we are operating safely. So once we have isolated both the water side as well as the steam side, what we will make sure is that gas venting is carried out from the small vent boxes that are available in the line and once that is done, what we will ensure is that after opening the equalizing valve which is manually done, we will let the lines equalize and let the pressure come down. Once that is done, we will slowly open the drain walls. The drain walls need to be opened in such a way that you first vent the theoretical high pressure side first and while doing this we have to make sure that significant amount of time is given before draining so as to allow this steam to condense into water and the operation to be safe after the equalization has been carried out. Similarly, the low pressure side would also be drained and it would mean that the DP cell is now properly isolated and the line is drained for the for the process. After this, what we need to do is the calibration part. So in the calibration part, what we do is that we need an external gauge connection. We need a hand pump assembly or a pressurization assembly which we can connect either on the high pressure side or on the low pressure side and we need to continuously monitor the electrical output or basically the reading of the DP cell per se. So to monitor this electrical output, we can use a multimeter across the connections and because we know the 4 to 20 milliamp range of the operational condition of the DP transmitter, depending upon the electrical output, we can easily understand what is the level that we are expecting at that particular value of current. Now, what we need to understand is that in the DP cell manual or let's say the combined manual of the boiler for every simultaneous value of pressure or basically also an interpretation in terms of MMH2O, there would be an indication of the percentage level that we expect in the boiler and also the electrical current output that is expected. So basically 
what I mean to say is that let's say if you're connecting on the high pressure side and taking the low pressure side as the reference value, then for zero MMH two O, you will basically be having, for example, a fixed value, let's say at an empty or for example, 10% or 20% calibrated. And thus there would be a simultaneous current between four to 20 milliamps that would be showing. Similarly, as the pressure would go increasing, the current value will also change simultaneously and that indirectly would be an indicative of the level that we expect within the boiler. So as we keep on changing or varying the pressure from low to the high side by the help of the hand pump or the pump that we have connected on the high pressure side, it would simultaneously vary the current output and thus accordingly we can check the level of the pressure in terms of calibration with respect to the reference or the manual values and also understand what we expect in terms of level. So to interpret this, we will need the clear understanding of the values that are given in the table in the manual. Also, since there are zero and span setting switches on the DP transmitter, if there is an erroneous value during either of the tests, then we can use these knobs or these switches to adjust the current basically that is flowing across the circuit and showing as the final output. What I basically mean over here is that in terms of the output that we are showing, everything depends on the current that is flowing within the circuit. So how we are interpreting it in terms of level, that is what we are adjusting with the zero and the span setting toggles or the knobs or the switches that are available. Once we do that, we can accurately calibrate the DP transmitter or the DP cell basically. Now, Imagine a situation where you have to put a new DP transmitter. So before putting a new DP transmitter also, you have to carry out the exact process of calibration for the DP transmitter as you would have done for the normal or the PMS or the annual routine of an already existing DP transmitter in this system. With all these processes being done already, now that we have to fit back the DP transmitter onto the assembly and again recommends it. So what we'll do is that we'll simply attach the entire unit in place and then first of all connect both the high pressure and the low pressure lines. And while doing so, we'll basically keep the drain or whatever the vent we have in the open condition. Now, once we have connected all the lines adequately, we will not directly open the isolating wall. First, what we will do is we will rinse the line completely with water side that is the low pressure side and then close the equalizing line and also the drain line or the drain valve of the low pressure side and then either make a manual filling of the water on the low pressure side. If we have manual openings through the air vent columns or allow the manual side to be flooded by opening the isolation wall. Before doing this, we have to make sure that no vents on that particular side are open and because the equalizing line and any other interconnection is closed. So that means there would be no flow from the low pressure side to the other high pressure side, even though the high pressure side is still isolated. Then once this side is properly into action and flooded already, then for the high pressure side, we'll again close the drain line and allow the high pressure side isolation wall just before the gas vent column will open that isolation wall and allow the steam to flow in. Then as slowly this will condense and a certain pressure will be exerted from the steam side on this column. It will automatically establish the equilibrium of the high pressure side. While this equilibrium is established, initially if you switch it on directly, then you might get erroneous values and that can lead us to understand false readings. So we need to give the correct adequate time for the equalization and then thereafter the simultaneous gradual rise of pressure and for the adequate readings to show. Then once everything is settled with, with respect to the amount of time that needs to be allowed, then we can simply switch on the panel which we had isolated before we were calibrating or replacing the DP transmitter and then check for the level of the boiler and also the indication on the remote side. Also, now since we have cleared the entire process in one flow, I would again like to reiterate one of the points that I had discussed while this explanation about the zero and the span setting. 
so the zero and this span knobs or basically the adjusting screws that are available what they do is that the zero setting would allow you to ensure the minimum setting value for example in the dp transmitter it is the 4 milliamps for the lowest level or basically the zero level so with the help of that at the minimum pressure while carrying out the calibration you can adjust the zero setting and then simultaneous movement from this lowest to the highest pressure would be encompassing the span setting and that would include the screw for the span setting at the maximum of the 20 milliamp output so that is how we are using the zero and the span setting to adjust in case if there are slightly erroneous values that are displayed during the calibration and why i am emphasizing is because this is the entire main point of calibration process for the dp transmitter because if all the readings are right then it is a very easy process to carry out but the emphasis on the adjustments and the fine tunings is very important when there are certain errors observed and also while doing this it is again very important to use the manual as i have emphasized in the video previously also and check the simultaneous values of the pressures and the expected current range and also the level that is simultaneously corresponding for this pressure during the calibration i hope that this in length explanation of the calibration process for a dp transmitter and also the process for changing or replacing a dp transmitter and installing a new one helps you to understand the intricacies and in case if you want to further clarify any doubts please feel free to drop into the comment section and let us know and we'll be happy to answer them also please make sure to like our videos subscribe our channel and share the content with your colleagues and people on board so that we can get maximum reach thank you